has your doctor or another medical professional ever told you that you're bone on bone and you're like, oh my goodness, that sounds horrible. Is surgery my only option? Is my life like I know it over? Well, I have some hope for you if you are feeling exactly like that because I want you to know that you are not alone in that thinking, but being bone on bone in an arthritic joint does not have to be a death sentence to everything you love doing. I wanna show you the five things that you need to do in order to find pain relief, even if you are bone on bone. Here we go. Okay, so bone on bone can be really scary, especially when you're already dealing with arthritis and now they may have told you you have no cartilage left or there's really no hope for any improvement in pain because of that bone on bone. But when it comes to being bone on bone, first I wanna tell you what that actually means because sometimes healthcare professionals don't exactly do the best job in fully explaining what it is. And then I wanna show you five ways that you can find pain relief. Okay, so when you're bone on bone, we're gonna look at a joint here. So here's the top bone. And if we think about this as like the knee, and then here's your second bone, okay. So this is your joint, and then this is where the cartilage lays. And then <clears throat> the interesting part is when you start to lose some of this cartilage here, you start to narrow this joint space. So this space becomes a lot smaller. And sometimes they might even start touching. And that's when we're considering bone on bone. But the interesting part is, is that bones don't have nerves. And so the act of bones rubbing together is not necessarily inherently painful. It's the stuff around it that gets irritated, which leads to pain when people are bone on bone. Because some people can be bone on bone and not even have any pain. Because those bones aren't necessarily rubbing together causing pain. It's the structures around it. So what you do have is this area around your joint that kind of encapsulates it. And that is called the synovium. And that can get irritated. And when that gets irritated, that can lead to pain. Another way you can have pain is if you have a lot of inflammation in your body, you can actually irritate these bones. And it's called bone edema. So those are kind of the two main ways of why you're having pain with bone on bone. Because your bone on bone does not correlate with pain. And one thing that they, one study actually looked at x rays, and someone can have the same x ray. They both can look like this without the green stuff. They both can be touching, considering bone on bone, small, narrow joint space, but they have so different of symptoms. So one can totally not have pain, and the other one can be in debilitating pain. So what is causing that pain is this irritation of the synovium and then the bone edema. So how can we reduce that? How can we reduce those symptoms? And that is what we're gonna talk about next. So we have five ways that you can find pain relief even with bone on bone arthritis. You don't necessarily have to run and get a joint replacement because you're bone on bone. There is hope for some relief. And so number one is get stronger. So I want to share an interesting study with you. So they were looking at people that have knee arthritis. And what this study, they looked at over 2,000 people. And what this study found was that independent of radiographic or x-ray evidence, so they took x-rays of all of them, the pain did not correlate with the x-ray necessarily as far as the more severe the x-ray looked it wasn't exactly correlated with the pain but what was actually correlated with the pain what they could predict was muscle strength particularly in the thighs so the weaker you were in your thigh muscles 
the more severe your pain was. And that's because those muscles play a key, key part in stabilizing the joint. Without that stability, your joint takes so much more force. We put a lot of force through our bodies every single day, walking and just living daily life, exercising, all kinds of different things. But if we are feeling weaker and our muscles aren't enough to help to absorb some of that stress, then that's where we can get into trouble. And that's where we can lead to some irritation of those areas. So one of the best ways you can get strong is to find an exercise plan where you can master some body weight movement, and then you can move on to some weight training. Weight training is honestly when I see people push through that plateau of pain relief. If you can lift weights without pain, then you are going to be on the right track but it's getting there first. So I have a solution for you at the end that's going to be very helpful for that. All right, so we have strength. Now, number two <clears throat> is actually improving your balance. So when you have bone on bone arthritis, likely your pain is probably going to be severe if you're watching this doesn't necessarily mean it is because you can also be bone on bone and not necessarily have pain, but your knee might be buckling a lot or you might not feel confident in that knee. Either way, whether you have severe pain or it just feels like it's going to give out all the time, your balance can really take a hit. And the problem with that is you can fall, and especially if you have osteoporosis, osteopenia, or some of those other things, a fall can really be detrimental to you. I've had people that have fallen on their knees and have caused other complications with the meniscus and things like that, or people that have, you know, broken arms, and so we don't want that. We don't ever want to fall. But one of the most important things is improving your balance. So one, just to prevent falls, but two, to improve your balance, you get all of your muscles working together at once. When that happens, magic happens. We need all of our muscles to be on the same page. And when we have pain, they're not necessarily all on the same page, which can delay our balance reactions and then put us at a higher risk for falls. So we have to improve our balance. And so this solution at the end is also going to help you with improving balance because we also need to make sure these balance movements are good for our joints too and aren't gonna flare up our pain. So that's super important. Okay, number three is actually supplements. And this is an interesting one because there's so many supplements out there and there are so many things that you can take, so many different things that you hear. But a couple of them that I typically recommend are turmeric and fish oil. And I actually just posted a video on turmeric that looks like that. And what that video tells you is just goes through what, why you should be taking turmeric and what exactly what the brands and all that sort of stuff. So you can check out that video. But before you take any supplements, I want to write this down because this is an extremely important website for you. And I will link it in the description below, but it's called consumerlab.com. Anytime you wanna take a supplement, I want you to go here first. It's a super, super cheap membership. I am not sponsored by them, but what they do is they break down all the supplements, make sure that you're getting quality ingredients, make sure that the dosage that they say they're putting in there is actually in there. And so they have a whole list of approved things because if you're not taking a quality supplement, you're just wasting money. So you wanna make sure that things are quality and turmeric and fish oil are two main supplements that I've had clients take that have made amazing changes. Because when you're bone on bone arthritis, when you have bone on bone arthritis and you're actually having pain, it's usually pretty severe. And we want to decrease this irritation as much as possible. So these two things are going to help, but this can help to kind of reduce inflammation even more. And number four can actually help the most initially food you want to make sure that you are fueling your body with the right foods making sure that you're not driving up inflammation by the foods you eat so first it's honestly just looking at the quality of your food if we're eating a lot of processed foods things that come in boxes and bags and kind of are on the inside of the grocery store or if you're eating a lot of processed sugars. Now, natural sugar does not count. You can absolutely eat fruit, but 
we have to make sure we're incorporating fruits and vegetables and really making sure that we have some anti-inflammatory foods in our diet. Instead of just following some strict diet, just incorporate more anti-inflammatory foods. And I have a blog post that's gonna go through all the anti-inflammatory foods and that link is going to be down below. And then number five, and this one can trip a lot of people up and it sounds simple, but it's consistency. I have a lot of people who try exercise for two to three weeks. They try eating some anti-inflammatory foods for a couple of weeks and they don't see results. So they're like, you know what? That's not going to work for me. So I need to find something else and are constantly trying to find all of these different things. But the most important thing, I'm going to write this down because I want you to remember this is the target we are hitting. You want to give something a try for eight to 12 weeks as far as an exercise plan, improving your balance, incorporating anti-inflammatory foods, some supplements. I mean, if they work, you can keep using them, but you'll probably know within about six weeks for those four to six weeks if they're making a difference. But we have to be consistent for at least eight to 12 weeks. I have people that are like, do I need to do these exercises for the rest of my life? The answer is yes. So we want to make sure that you find something that you like because we have to be consistent. So many people give up right before they're about to make a huge breakthrough in their pain to break through their plateau, but they stop at like week four or five or six because they're not seeing results. One of the things that's going to drive up these results to help you be consistent is by thinking about the small wins. Those are going to be what keeps us going. So say you can't, you can hardly walk around the block, but maybe one day you were able to walk down the driveway and back and you didn't have any pain. That's a small win. We are working on using those small wins to keep us going, especially when we're dealing with some severe pain, we have bone on bone, we're just not in a good headspace maybe, then we have to use those small wins. Don't be so hard on yourself like, oh, I still can't walk around the block so this isn't working. We have to take those small wins. Maybe you walked half the block and you felt good. Take those small wins and run with them because that is what's going to help you keep consistency. So these are the five things that are going to help with your bone on bone arthritis pain. If you want to see the blog post of this video, that's also going to be down below as well. But I did promise you a solution of especially how you can improve your strength and improve your balance and help to improve consistency. So I have a five day arthritis friendly movement challenge. It's totally free. And it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to email you every day for five days of a workout video that you can try. It starts out very basic and then works its way up to some weight training. If it does progress too fast for you, that's okay. The beauty of it is you can stay on workout one for a while, go through it a few times, and then slowly progress, making sure you're listening to your body. But if you're feeling awesome, I want you to keep progressing, keep challenging yourself, and keep pushing yourself forward. But we don't want to overdo it either, so make sure you do listen to your body. Okay, so go ahead and check out that five day arthritis friendly challenge below along with some of these other links. Just click on that description. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel because we are giving so much more hope and optimism to you with you when you have arthritis, no matter what stage you're in. If you're just getting started with arthritis or if you've been dealing with arthritis for a long time, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then click that little bell next to it so that way you get notifications when I do release new videos. All right, I will see you inside that five day movement challenge and tune into the next video.